and it's your anxiety and your stress, um, which I would, it's palpable. I think it's, I think it's almost immediate for some people. Like they're just, they're right there. You start talking about what the next school year is. I will say that maybe on one hand, that's maybe why there aren't broad, broad based conversations about it. Cause people are very much like they're right in the zone. We're right in the zone. We're not going to zoom out because if we zoom out, what that looks like at the zoom out, when you take into account um, the models and the trajectory of COVID right now, like that's just a big picture that people are just going to get like bounced around in. So if if we're aware that there's a there's a triggering element to thinking about what would be happening next and how could I possibly plan and how could I ever make stuff happen in the amount of time that we could be asked to pivot having the conversation now about this or starting conversations around this right now i i think are important so that by default we don't just open-handedly start to use the government resources because one of the big picture things when you zoom out is our current government developing learn at home resources that are easy to access now preloaded onto certain technologies that are being handed out to students. So they're seeding the ground for their next version of what distance learning is. That is happening simultaneously as us, as us teachers in the virtual schools, developing our version of it. Our version of it, it's compassionate, it's human-centered, it's, it's aware, it's, it's trying to be equitable, it's reciprocal, like everything that is making it so organic and parallel, as parallel as possible to the real in-class experience is exactly what the Learn at Home isn't. And part of my concern is that teachers right now that are not educators that are not feeling connected to a bigger picture conversation about how do we sustain this energy and what we're currently doing because it is the better version of distance learning moving over purely to sort of like the learn at home and that pure what is the equivalent of a digital correspondence course is is not in my view the best move right now but I can see how individuals will say, I just can't develop this stuff at the speed that I need to do it. Whew. I'm happy that I can, you know, I can kind of go and use that other stuff, the stuff that's developed by the government. So it's a really, this is a, this is a high tension point for me when I'm having conversations with teachers and trying to light them up to think creatively, to be comfort in the creativity, to share amongst each other, to um, keep pushing the relationship stuff, keep calling, keep whatever you're Google chatting, whatever you're doing with the kids. In talking with the kids this week, one of the things that popped up when I'm phoning is that they are really happy to hear someone's voice that isn't either the voice in their head or one of their parents. It just instantly gives them the feel because of the way that we talk when we're talking as teachers, the tone, the connection, we're listening, we're sort of like, you know, we're listening and then sort of like helping to get the kid to the conversation. Like everything that we do in that human moment um, is what they crave, even if they're not able to sort of articulate it. Um, and I've had a few students that don't want me to get off the line. They're asking me more questions. They're talking, they're connecting. And I feel, I do feel I've pushed off my, this is where the day ends at six, seven o'clock. Cause there's more calling and more planning to do, right? But existing in that space, finding a way to exist in that space and to talk about what it means to exist in that space and to share our resources that we're, we're creating in that space is all of the armament, the good armament and the good tools and moving through that space of vulnerability to get the better armament and the better tools, fortification, vitamins, whatever you want to call it. It'll be the good stuff that in September when there are people that are like, you know what? I'm going to jump. I'm going to take, I'm going to take the learn at home stuff. I'm going to use it. I want to make sure that I want to make sure that I'm part of kind of like a movement that's saying there's another version here. It feels, you know, it feels a little bit like it's kind of like that whole moment where some people are, you know, 
I, I it took a while for me to believe that you are you familiar with Ubuntu, like the operating system that, that Ubuntu, the I think uh, is it Dobby, Andrew Dobby is like dudes, stop buying new tech. Let's just re-image ones with a nice, stable, um, open sourced operating system and your old computers. We don't have to buy new computers. Convincing people that the open sourcing to, to like, I have one downstairs that he helped me re-image. It's great. One of my laptops downstairs that the kids use, I re-image, it's an old Dell, but it works great. Never a headache. The one that's even older, that's a Windows based, always headaches, always headaches. So, but um, just a complaint about believing that something different that isn't like what you're doing could be good. That's the moment that we're in. The familiar system will be the learn at home. The familiar system will be what we're doing right now. The shared open sourced, community sourced, collaborative, connected one that we're all suffering through right now. On one hand, if you just flip the edge of it a little bit. There's a really cool opportunity there for us to develop good stuff for September. And it might be in my mind, the necessary, um, the necessary kind of vitamins to keep us from entirely buying into the learn at home model.